Hi guys, it's Kate. This video accompanies the worksheet on relative growth rates for Math MB. You should have the worksheet printed out and alongside you and follow along with it as we work through some of the problems. Let's get started. We're looking at 1a, which compares two functions, natural log of x and the cube root of x, and the question is, which is larger when x is very large? Take a moment, pause the video, and sketch both of these graphs to see if you can decide. Pick one or the other, natural log of x, cube root of x, which one is larger for very large x? Go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to do that. This question, asking about the function values for two different functions for very large x, gets to the root of what we talk about when we mean relative growth. As the input x increases, which of these functions grows faster, and therefore, which of these functions is larger for very large x. Looking at their two graphs, they don't really look very different from each other. They're both certainly increasing functions, but it takes a greater and greater increase in x to get the same increase in the output. So we have this gradual increase that starts off pretty promising at first, but then slows down as x increases, and the same thing happens with the cube root of x in both of these functions. So just sketching the graph of these functions really isn't much of a help. Our guess is if we sketch them on the same plane, they would probably intersect somewhere, but we're not really sure if they would or not, and if that happens. Let's take a look at part B. We wanna figure out how we can determine which one of these is larger for very large x. Graphing hasn't really helped. Will algebra help? I'm not really sure. Part B specifically asks us to try to use the tool of limits to confirm which is larger when x is very large. Pause this video and think for a moment about a limit you could take whose result would tell you which of these functions is larger for very large x. In class, we discussed two very interesting approaches. One is taking the limit of the difference of the two functions as x approaches infinity. We thought to ourselves, hey, if we take this limit and we find that it goes to positive infinity, that would indicate that natural log of x grows faster. And if it goes to negative infinity, that would indicate that the cube root of x is much larger for very large x, or that the cube root of x grows faster. So that was the idea behind that limit. And unfortunately, that was about as far as we got because then when it came time to take the limit of this, we found that, well, if we take the limit as x approaches infinity of natural log of x, this is gonna go to infinity, and so is this, and as much as we would like to say that infinity minus infinity is zero, infinity is a concept and not a number. And so it still matters which one of these is growing faster. It's not just going to be a limit of zero. So we were just stuck. We couldn't actually evaluate this limit, but we knew what the two possible results would tell us about which of these two functions is much bigger for large x. All right, so we were stuck after that idea and then another idea got thrown out and it was, what if we compared the limits of their derivatives? Because that would tell us which one is growing faster and therefore which one of these is going to be larger for very large x. Let's take a look at what the limit of the derivatives would look like. So we computed the limit of each of the derivatives of the function natural log of x and the cube root of x, and we found that both of these limits of the derivatives is zero, which doesn't surprise us, right? The climb as these functions get larger and larger and larger, as the input gets larger, just keeps slowing. That's why they're shallowing out in this part of the function here in the way that we've drawn them. And so while the limit of the derivatives seemed initially helpful, it sort of became a little bit unclear which one was going to zero faster, which meant which one was slowing down quicker, which meant the other one would be speeding up. And we didn't want to totally throw out this idea, looking at the limit of the derivatives. That seemed actually quite positive. But we needed to think about another tool, another way to use limits as a tool to compare functions. And upon the suggestion from yours truly of looking at L'Hopital's rule as a hint or as a possibility, what would be another way that we could use limits to compare these functions? 
And in fact, this will then involve the limit of the derivatives. Let's refresh our memory of L'Hopital's rule at the box at the top of the page. L'Hopital's rule says, if a limit of one function over another, so the ratio of two functions, is a blank or blank type of limit, then the limit of the ratio of those two functions is the same as what if that latter limit exists or is plus or minus infinity? Well, this is saying that if the limit of the ratio of two functions is a zero over zero or infinity over infinity indeterminate form, we then found that the limit of f over g, that ratio f over g, is equal to the limit of their derivatives. How does this compare to what we're looking at in number one, where we're trying to figure out which function is larger for very large x? Well, the fundamental problem with the cube root of x versus the natural log of x is that both of these functions go to infinity as x grows without bound. And we could easily take the natural log of x and the cube root of x and re-express this as a ratio between the two functions that would classify itself as an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. Let's take a look at that. There it is. We've just constructed it. Just put one in the numerator, one in the denominator. You have a ratio between the two, and it's an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. All right, so now the question becomes, if we compute this limit, clearly needing to use L'Hopital's rule because it qualifies as one of these guys up here, right? If we take this limit, and it happens to equal zero, what does that mean about the relative size of these functions as x gets really big? Well, if this limit equals zero, that means the denominator grows faster and eventually is much, much larger than the numerator. On the other hand, if the limit is positive infinity, what would that allow us to say? Well, that would mean that the numerator is larger for a very large x. That's what would cause the entire ratio to grow without bound. So this ratio, the limit of this ratio will actually answer our question about which of these functions is larger when x is very large, if we're able to compute it. And based off of L'Hopital's rule, once we apply L'Hopital's rule, we'll be able to compute this limit. So let's give it a whirl. We have an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. Let's apply L'Hopital's rule once and see what we get. We had actually already computed derivatives from earlier in this experimental process, um, but Let's clean up the algebra here and restate these fractions and fractions as one nice single fraction. The piece up here that's in the denominator up in the numerator needs to be in the denominator of the whole. The piece down here that's in the denominator of the denominator now needs to be up in the numerator. And we can still simplify this, right? In total, this is an exponent of negative one third on x. And so this should be three over x to the one third. The limit of this is zero. And so we found that we are soundly in this result right here. The limit being zero means that the function in the denominator is going to be larger for very large x. So that means that the cube root of x is larger than natural log of x for very large x. Let's take a look at how we did that, right? We took the two functions that we were comparing, created a ratio between the two, because we knew that both of them were growing without bound, that allowed us to classify this as an indeterminate form and apply L'Hopital's rule to compute the limit. And the limit then told us which of the two functions grew faster and therefore was eventually larger than the other for very large x. The way that we notate something like this is saying that natural log of x is either much, much smaller than the cube root of x Alternatively, you could have also said that the cube root of x is eventually much, much larger than natural log of x. Either of these are valid ways to express the relationship between the growth rates of these two functions. Let's apply this in part c. Generalize. If p is any positive number, does natural log of x or x to the p grow more quickly? These are the two functions you now need to compare. Pause the video try to approach this much in the same way as we did here and see what your result is. All right, this ratio 
is now the ratio whose limit I want to interpret in order to determine which of these functions grows faster. Definitely need L'Hopital's rule because this is an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. Again, p is a positive number, right? So that means this is going to be a growing, uh, x to the p is a function that grows as x increases. I'm going to algebraically clean this up a little bit. We find that this is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over p times x to the p. And as x grows without bound, that limit is going to be 0, meaning that the denominator is growing faster and is eventually much, much larger than the numerator. So our result is that x to the p, where p is any positive number, eventually grows faster than and eventually is much larger than natural log of x. This is actually a really powerful result because it's true for any positive p, meaning like x to the point zero 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 like a million zeros, and then a one, that grows much faster than natural log of x eventually and becomes much larger than natural log of x eventually. Let's continue and see how using L'Hopital's rule in this particular context can help determine which families of functions grow faster than others. Turn the page. The box at the top of the page is designed to help you synthesize the result of using L'Hopital's rule in this context. So let's use it as a warm up here before we dive right into some of these problems. Suppose that f and g are functions that are both positive when x is large, and we say that g grows more quickly than f, written g of x is greater than greater than f of x, if the limit of f over g is what, or the limit of g over f is what. Well, we're being told that the function in the denominator is the fastest growing one in the first case, so that means that the limit would have to be zero in this particular setting here. And if you had set up the ratio so that the faster growing function was in the numerator, this would be positive infinity here. So we're going to constantly be setting up ratios, taking the limit as x goes to infinity, it will trigger the use of L'Hopital's rule because both of these functions will be growing as x grows without bound, and the result will tell us whether the numerator grows faster or the denominator grows faster. In this particular case, if you didn't know anything about the functions and this was the result that you got, you'd say, hey, g grows faster, right? The denominator is getting bigger, and it eventually becomes much, much larger than the numerator. And then similarly, if you got this result, positive infinity, that would say, hey, the numerator grows faster. And that's how you deduce that whatever is in the denominator in this case, whatever is in the numerator in this case, is the faster growing function. Take a moment and work through number two, all of it. Does 1.001 to the x or x squared grow more quickly? So an exponential function versus a polynomial. And then how about beefing it up? 1.0001 to the x or 3x cubed plus 7x plus 5 grow more quickly? And then see if you can generalize from these two results in A and B down to C. Go ahead and pause the video and then we'll talk about this briefly. All right, let's take a look. We're trying to see whether 1.001 to the x or x squared grows more quickly. So we want to take the limit of the ratio of these two functions and see what happens as x goes to infinity. Interpret the result and decide which one of these grows faster. You might need to take a moment and refresh what the derivative of an exponential function is, but here's what the general work should look like. In the process of taking this limit, we actually encounter two indeterminate forms. The very original one that we start with, 1.001 to the x over x squared, that's an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. And even after taking L'Hopital's rule once, we end up with another indeterminate form here. Notice also that this is some positive number. It's very, very small. We know that natural log of 1 is 0, but it's an increasing function. So natural log of 1.001 is going to be slightly greater than 0. But we still have a growing function here, an increasing function that's positive. So this is also an indeterminate form that's infinity over infinity. Applying L'Hopital's rule again, we finally have a limit that we can compute. The result is infinity, which indicates to us the numerator grows faster and is eventually much, much bigger than the denominator, meaning that 1.001 to the x grows faster than x squared, and for very large x, is larger than x squared. 
When we carry this result on into part B, it's asking us which one grows more quickly, 1.0001 to the x, so an exponential where the base is a bit smaller than the one that we just compared into A, and or 3x cubed plus 7x plus 5, which is a higher degree polynomial than x squared that we had in A. And you might not need to do uh, an explicit application of L'Hopital's rule to reason about this. We know that yes, this is an indeterminate form, but as we apply L'Hopital's rule again and again to an exponential function, as we saw in 2a, an exponential function's derivative is proportionate to the original function. So no matter how many times you take the derivative of something like 1.001 to the x, 1.001 to the x, 1. a million zeros, 1 to the x, you're always going to have that function involved in the derivative, right? 1.001 to the x doesn't go away, and 1.0001 to the x won't go away. We'll be multiplying it by natural log of 1.0001 in this case. Whereas with polynomials, when you take the derivative, the degree will always decrease. And there's only a finite number of times that you can take the derivative of a polynomial before you end up with a constant that no longer grows. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this, and even though the derivative of the derivative of the derivative of the derivative, like the nth derivative of an exponential function will not stop being a function of x, it will not stop increasing as x goes to infinity, that won't happen for a polynomial. So we could take the derivative of this an infinite number of times, we would still have something uh, in the numerator there that grows without bound, we cannot take the derivative th of this an infinite number of times. What we would end up doing is taking the derivative here, it took two times before we ended up with a constant. Here it would take three times before the same thing would happen, and we would have some function of x that would increase as x increases over a constant. And so we would see here that the exponential function will still grow faster than the third degree polynomial eventually. So here's how I would express that. You can take the derivative n times of the numerator, apply L'Hopital's rule n times, and you would still have this 1.001 to the x term involved times some power of natural log of 1.0001. The denominator can only take the derivative three times before you have a constant and you'd no longer have an indeterminate form. Now, what does this mean? 1.0001 to the x, definitely grows much faster than 3x cubed plus 7x plus 5. And it really, the 7x part and the plus 5 part, that wasn't really what 1.0001 to the x was up against. 1.0001 to the x was really up against the cubic piece of that, the 3x to the third. That's the fastest growing term in the denominator. And this idea that it's really the fastest growing term in the numerator versus the fastest growing term in the denominator comes in handy when we're trying to reason about rates of growth. Now, part C falls into place really nicely. If P of X is a polynomial with a positive leading coefficient and B is greater than zero, does B to the X or P of X grow more quickly? You may want to say right away from your experiences with 2a and 2b that exponential functions hands down always going to grow faster than polynomials. And that's almost true, but you have to be really, really careful about the base of that exponential function. It's not enough for the base to just be positive. What if the base were less than 1? What if b was equal to 0.9? Well then, as x increases, the polynomial will increase, but if you raise something less than 1 to a really, really high power, that's actually going to decrease. So that exponential is not a growing function. It's a decreasing function as you raise something less than 1 to a higher and higher power. So for b less than 1, you don't even have a contest between two functions that are growing. The polynomial will win. For b greater than 1, that's when the polynomial's in trouble. That no matter what, as long as b is greater than one, the base of that exponential, that exponential function is going to grow faster than the polynomial, no matter how large of a degree the polynomial is. That's a really important clarification. If b is one, 
then it's actually a constant function. You raise one to any power and it doesn't grow. It's just one, right? Um, and if you have b is less than one, it's actually a decreasing function. So b to the x, the exponential family of functions, eventually grow much faster than polynomials, but only for bases greater than one. So what does all of this matter? Let's take a look at number three. This is a really, really important skill that as you go off into applied fields, you're going to encounter lots of different functions that capture how certain quantities increase or decrease. And you want to know how they compare to each other. And so being able to reason about different functions relative growth rates comes in handy in a really big way. Let's take a look at our candidates. The general idea is that you want to put these functions in order from slowest growing to fastest growing. All right, here are our seven candidates. And we want to think about some of the takeaways that we've realized between number one and two on this worksheet. And in number one, we took a look at how logarithms grew with respect to powers of x. So we looked at specifically natural log of x versus the cube root of x. We found that logarithmic functions grow more slowly than powers of x, positive powers of x is what I should say. So that's the first piece. And then the second thing that we learned from number two was that exponential functions grow more quickly than powers of x. So now we need to analyze this set of functions. Now there are a couple here, specifically this one, this one, this one, and this one, that I'd like to apply some algebra to in order to distill them into a clearer form. So one of the things that I want to notice is that 3 to the 2x can be rewritten as 3 squared to the x. Same with 2 to the 3x. That can be 2 cubed to the x, right? Same property of exponents. We use this fact a lot when manipulating the uh, algebra of exponential functions. I'd also like to rewrite the 7th root of x as a clearer power of x. That's going to be x to the 1 7 and last, I want to take a look at log base 7 of x and express that more clearly as some function of natural logarithms um, by using the change of base formula to rewrite this. Now that you have these rewritten, try to maybe simplify some of the algebra, especially here and here, a little bit more, and order these seven functions from slowest growing to fastest growing. Pause the video. Go ahead and do that. How'd you fare? Let's take a look. The first thing that we're able to notice is that we're really gonna look at log logarithmic functions as being the slowest, then positive powers of x, then exponential functions. The logarithmic function that's a clear logarithm or scalar multiple, right, a coefficient on a logarithm, is this natural log of x over natural log of seven. That's going to be our slowest growing function of x. Then we want to look at the positive powers of x, and we have x to the 1 7th and x to the millionth, and just based on taking derivatives and knowing what both of these functions look like, x to the 1 millionth definitely will be growing faster than the 7th root of x. Then we take a look at our exponential options. We have 1.01 to the x, we have 3 squared to the x, which is 9 to the x, and we have 2 cubed to the x, which is 8 to the x, so as the base gets larger, the rate of change, right, the, the rate of change will increase. So 1.01 .01 is going to be shallower than 8 to the x, which will be shallower than 9 to the x. So that's how we're going to order that set of exponential functions. And we have one left, this guy right here, very tricky, x natural log of x. And you may have looked at that and said, well, it's a logarithm, so it's the slowest, or it's a value of x, right? It has some x to the first, isn't it? So maybe it's in, within the positive powers of x. This function does not clearly fit into any family of functions. It's a little bit of both. And so the question becomes, how quickly does it grow? And there are a few different ways for us to find out. By reasoning about the function values, we can tell that it will be much bigger than just natural log of x by itself. 
and certainly bigger than natural log of x divided by natural log of 7, because what we're doing to this function is we're actually multiplying it by x. So when x is something like a million, we're comparing something here, like natural log of a million divided by natural log of 7, to natural log of a million times a million. So it's going to be much bigger. So it's definitely not the slowest growing. Maybe it's here. And so then the question becomes, how does it compare to these positive powers of x? And you can definitely use L'Hopital's rule to do this. Let's take a look at what happens. I took the limit of the ratio of x natural log of x and the seventh root of x, and after one round of L'Hopital's rule, I was able to conclude that the numerator grows faster. So x natural log of x definitely grows faster than the seventh root of x, but does it grow faster than x to the one millionth power? Let's take a look. When we take the limit of the ratio of x natural log of x and x to the one millionth power, we can actually algebraically simplify already and say, that, oh, that's going to be the same as the limit as x approaches infinity of natural log of x over x to the 999,999th power. And we know that positive powers of x are going to grow faster than natural log of x. So this limit will be zero, which means that the denominator grows faster. So x natural log of x is going to sandwich itself right here faster than the seventh root of x, slower than x to the one millionth power. You could also approach this reasoning by looking at the two different parts of x times natural log of x. Once x gets larger than e, you're effectively multiplying x by something that's greater than one. So it's going to grow a little bit faster than x all by itself. So it will definitely outpace x to the one seventh which grows more slowly than x to the first. But of course, if you think about um, x to the one millionth power, there you can also do sort of factor x to the one millionth into two separate factors. And you can see this as a contest between these two pieces. These two are totally evenly matched, but these two are not. x to the 999,999th 999th power it's going to grow more quickly than natural log of x, which is why this team, this product, is going to grow more quickly than this one ultimately. So if we wanted to write this from start to finish, you would begin with log base 7 of x as the slowest function. Then we have x to the 1 7th, then x natural log of x, then x to the 1 millionth, then the family of exponential functions. 1.01 base goes first, then 8, then 9. And then we are done. Why is this so useful? Well, knowing which terms grow fastest means that computing limits becomes much easier because we can just focus when you have these two functions that are ratios of rather complicated sums of growing uh, terms then you can say, oh, which term in this sum grows fastest? I'm going to pay attention to that in the numerator. Which term in the denominator grows fastest? I'm going to pay attention to that in the denominator. Let's take a look at how this can work. Looking at 4a on here. When we take a look at this complicated limit, right, the numerator has a ton of terms that are growing, the denominator has a ton of terms that are growing, the critical pieces are which term is growing the fastest in the numerator and which term is growing the fastest in the denominator. That is who is going to ultimately decide what the limit will be. So that means that this rather complicated limit has the same value as this simplified limit. I've isolated the fastest growing term in the numerator, which is 2x cubed, and the fastest term in the denominator, which is 5x cubed. And because these are the two fastest terms in each part of this ratio, that's, those are the functions that will decide what this limit will be. And this limit will end up being 2 fifths. Earlier in the year, we learned how to compute limits like this by dividing by the fastest growing term across the numerator and the denominator. And we ended up with the same result. But now that we have this more rigorous justification of why this is the fastest growing term, we can use this reasoning to say, well, once I isolate the fastest growing term, I know that's going to dictate the behavior of the numerator as x grows without bound and the denominator as x grows without bound. And so the limit of each of those pieces, um, the ratio of each of those pieces will tell me the limit of the more complicated 
function as well. Take a, a try and tackle 4B on your own sort of after this video, but be careful about which pieces are growing and not. But let's take a look at 5. This has uh, a bit more detail in it. So let's take a look at the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared natural log of x over 3x squared plus 17. Now remember that we cannot just break apart products of various terms. Both pieces of a product affect how quickly the limit is growing. So there's no opportunity to simplify the numerator and do a reasoning about, oh, how this limit behaves more like x squared. No, 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 no. The only piece that we can actually focus on trying to simplify in our mind is 3x squared plus 17. And so when we look in the denominator, the term that grows the fastest there is 3x squared. So that means that ultimately this limit will be the same as this limit. I haven't touched the numerator at all. The denominator, as it gets really, really big, that plus 17 really isn't going to matter. So these two limits will be shared, right? Whatever is fastest growing in the numerator, and there's only one term in the numerator, over whatever's fastest growing in the denominator and how those two interact with each other will decide the limit of the more complicated original limit. So here we have an opportunity for a little bit of algebraic simplification. x squared divides out and we have the limit as x approaches infinity of natural log of x over 3, which means that this limit is positive infinity. Take a moment and try out 5b using this same type of reasoning and see what you come up with. Giving it a shot, 5b has e to the x plus x squared over 7x cubed plus 5, and we're taking the limit as x approaches negative infinity, which is very important. As x approaches negative infinity, the tendency is to say, oh, e to the x is growing faster. But actually, as x approaches negative infinity, e to the x isn't growing at all. x squared is the piece that's growing the fastest here. And as x approaches negative infinity, as far as magnitude goes, 7x cubed is the faster growing piece. So we know that these two pieces will dominate the behavior of the numerator. Eventually, adding on e to the x is not going to matter at all in the numerator. And adding on 5 is not going to matter at all in the denominator. So that means that this limit is going to this be the same as this limit. Now there's some algebraic simplification that can happen here as well. And this limit goes to 0. I will leave 5c for you to tackle as well. Um, but be very careful about things that grow and things that don't, and quite specifically trigonometric functions, sine of x in this particular case, and 5c, as x grows without bound, sine of x just keeps oscillating between negative 1 and 1. It's not a growth term. So try and tackle 5c on your own. Let's take a look at number 6 really quickly. It says evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of square root of x times e to the 1 over x. What form is this limit? And the question, what form is this limit, is usually referring to what sort of indeterminate form is it. We have two different pieces in this product, two different terms involved. The square root of x, as x approaches 0, that piece is approaching 0. But e to the 1 over x, as x approaches 0, just this uh, exponent is growing without bound. So e raised to some exponent that's growing without bound is also growing without bound. So this particular type of indeterminate form is what's called a zero times infinity indeterminate form. And similar to how when we have zero over zero or infinity over infinity, the two pieces of the limit are pulling the overall limit in different directions, so is this one. Usually when you multiply one function by something that's going to zero, you're thinking, oh, the entire limit's going to go to zero. But then again, if you take something and multiply it by something that's growing without bound, you think, the whole thing is going to grow without bound. So that's why 0 times infinity, each individual piece is telling you a different story about what this limit it should be equal to. And so the question becomes, how do you evaluate a limit like this? And what you want to do is just use some of your algebra skills to rewrite this as a fraction. It will be an indeterminate form that you can then apply L'Hopital's rule to. Let's see what I'm talking about. Let's leave e to the 1 over x in the numerator. What will we put in the denominator, x raised to what power? 
so that it was effectively the same as multiplying by the square root of x. If you thought, I'm going to put a negative exponent in the denominator, you were right. This is how you want to apply some algebra to rewrite this as a limit that ultimately will be one of those um, infinity over infinity indeterminate forms. Because now we have down in the denominator, we have something like 1 over x to the 1 half, right? And that is, as that goes to 0, that's going to grow, as x goes to 0, that will grow without bound e to the 1 over x we've already discussed as x goes to 0 will grow without bound. So now we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this. This creates a little bit of a mess, but you want to bear with it because uh, a little bit of an algebraic rewriting and we'll have something that we can take the limit of. Let's get that divided by negative 1 half out of the denominator. Similarly with this fractions and fractions and negative exponents, try and simplify this algebraically. This is what we end up with. We have 2 times e to the 1 over x over x to the 1 half. And as we take a look at what these two numerator and denominator functions are going to, let's see what our limit should be. As x goes to 0, we still have a numerator that's growing without bound. And as x goes to 0, we now have a denominator that's going to 0. So now we have infinity over 0. And this is not an indeterminate form anymore. Right? If you have a denominator that's shrinking, that's making the entire expression increase without bound. If you have a numerator that's increasing without bound, the whole thing is increasing without bound. So this is not an indeterminate form. This is increasing without bound. The limit is positive infinity. We will be picking up about other types of indeterminate forms in class on Monday. Um, but please feel free to email me at all if you have any questions about this. The most important things that you want to think about for this problem set are relative growth rates of different functions, how to use L'Hopital's rule to decide which um, function grows faster than another, and then without using L'Hopital's rule, the ability to take a look at some functions, reason about which term is growing fastest in the numerator and denominator, and then be able to compute those functions relatively quicker than if you were just left to doing only L'Hopital's rule or algebraic manipulation. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Bye, guys.